So I believe that the, when the initiative is taken by the leader to offer coaching to others, there's a really good chance that they pick that up and they'll say, yes, I would like that. Now, as a leader with a number of people, uh, I can offer them an opportunity of one-on-one or I can say, let's do some group sessions. By the way, there is a very powerful self-coaching line or suggestion that I give to other leaders at all levels, and it's this. What can I do tomorrow to be a better leader than I was today? And I encourage mm. all leaders to use that. Think about what what can I do tomorrow to be a better leader than I was today? Which also mm. brings me to this aspect as well, because we're broadly talking about leaders and leaders coaching. What about I feel that I need coaching as a leader? What can I do? Muhammad, what do you suggest? Um, what can I do? I guess say the question, only the last question. Yeah, the last question is if I just, if I feel I need coaching, what can I do? Yeah, uh, I was uh, I went deep into the question. What can I do tomorrow so that I be a better leader than I am today? That was really <laughs> deep. And um, the the moment you pose the question, I think another dimension of the brainwave of uh, the person is begin beginning to interact and think because. Doing the daily job uh, prevents us from thinking, uh, going out of the way, taking a step back and thinking, just thinking, you know. So the mere fact that uh, you are opening for me the horizon, the possibility to think as a leader, regardless of what the answer is there, that is a huge step forward. Uh, what, can, what Aristotle says, I cannot teach you anything. I can only make you think. Yeah. So if I make you think, that is a huge answer ahead. So I'll stop there because you made me think now. <laughs> yeah, well, look, okay, let's stay with that for a moment because w- what I want people to do is, is to reflect on their behaviours as a coach, reflect on their behaviours and think, but when I had this interaction, did it get a good result for me? Or, or what mm. could I have done better or differently to get a better result out of that or similar interaction. And, and I, mm. to me, it's, it's a constant, it's a behavioural uh, um, process that becomes almost normal all the time. Now, I'm not obsessed about m- personally me reflecting on every word that I say and did I get it right? No, of course not. But I do, ref- I still reflect on interactions that I've had and I think, could I have done it better? Is there another way? Mm. So I, I think that leaders should be examining that, but without being forensic. <laughs> you know, don't get down too, too deep into it, but at least be aware of maybe, maybe I really should listen more to the team rather than just interrupting them as I did today. So that's something that a leader should be asking and asking others and encouraging others to, to think about that. Certainly, if you do that with the, the people you are leading and getting them to think of better ways of doing things, and then they can discuss that with you as their coach at, at some stage. But let me ask you, come back to this question that I was posing, and that was, as a leader, what can you do to help you become a better leader? Apart from that self-coaching, there's another area that I want you to think about. What might that area be? Yeah, that that's a powerful question, and uh, it it is triggering you know uh, the incremental improvements which, uh, as an individual, I can do. Yeah, and I I, I I'm just seeing a, a leader with whom I worked, and his approach is having a weekly conversations with each and every employee to know them personally and um, yeah. not just about work yeah 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 and and what what i have observed is you know that actually make the workplace and 
a better place to be in yeah and 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 uh, it has created a, a safe space where people feel that you are valued and yeah. um, and and what what happens is there is a, a great cooperation between each and every one Oh. and people sh- share things uh, people uh, say that uh, phibi i don't know this can you help so and i can also say that this is something which i'm not familiar can you help me on how can be and what i observed in that place of work is work get done new initiatives get taken and and we all are happy to be there in that space so uh, it, it it is it is a Uh, it is not just a workplace it is a place where you find joy that's what the word i want to use at that point yeah, yeah. at this moment oh and it, it, but then ultimately engagement right that's what that's what you want yeah but here's my question uh, we are let's just be a little bit a little bit more specific this we are or th- four leaders are working at a similar level right they uh, one is the country manager one is the operations manager one is the finance manager eh. Let's just hypothetically say that. How would they improve their leadership behaviours? Apart from the obvious ones of saying, how can I be a better leader tomorrow than I was today? What else? I've just given you the... I would... Mohammed. Uh, uh, it happened to me. So uh, I would um, ask for help. I would ask for coaching and coaching doesn't have to be uh, done by an external certified coach you know my colleague can be my coach I can be the coach of my colleague perfect because at the end of the day I can uh, clarify um, an issue re- related to finance as you said operations and that's that's you know only by a question but when you have an issue with leading Uh, especially of course leading comes to leading people yeah you are most probably not in a situation or in a state that allows you to fully uh, evaluate because it's also very emotional i w- what i did is i asked some people out- outside they are leaders also excuse me uh, this is happening in my department this is happening with my colleague and I'm, i don't know how to manage the situation it's getting a bit personal can you help me with that what shall i do in these situations so he will coach me actually and he will ask me what is it uh, what is it that you want at the end of the day out of this interaction do you really want to solve this problem quickly or you want to improve both of you your you and your something like this so i'm being coached and i'm glad uh i allowed someone outside who is not charged emotionally as i am to guide me coach me so the answer to your question is i will ask for help and this in this case it's called coaching i'm going to suggest that you, it is reasonable and probably a good idea to set up something that has a little bit more structure to it mm-hmm. and that i mean that the operations manager the production manager the administration manager let's say four or five of them decide together why don't we have a, a an interaction once a month once a fortnight let's agree on the time frame maybe it's half an hour let's just see how it goes but what i suggest this is is peer coaching that is we are coaching each other we are talking about leadership issues that may arise in my department my division and i can say guys now with the fundamental element that is really important right from the outset is trust these four or five people must be able to absolutely trust each other there is no mm-hmm. com- sometimes we know in organizations there is competition between the operations department and the finance department or the operations department and the marketing department <clears throat> and sometimes there are what we call silos so clearly if there's silos one way of, of moving removing those silos is in fact to set up a situation like this where the people at the top level discuss the problems that they are having in a in an environment of of confidentiality and sharing where we're not trying to score points but we are trying to help each other 
We're not trying to, to, to be combative. We're not trying to win things over. But we're saying, you know, this is a problem I got. Have you experienced this as well? Yeah, that happened to me three weeks ago, or I've had a similar one. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> and this discussion helps not only the person who's raised that concern or that particular problem, but others who are part of the discussion when they might share examples of what they did or what their views might be or when they talk about similar situations, everybody learns. And the fundamental, of course, is trust. At that level, it cannot be overtaken by egos. It cannot be the different departments competing with each other. But the, those leaders, and I stress that word, need to have trust among themselves. Now, you might even start with three, just three leaders of, of similar um, status within the organisation and build on that. And then you might invite one or two others in just to say, this is what we're doing. This is how it's working for us. We are coaching each other to become better leaders. We're not competing we're helping each other. If you want to be part of this, we'd be happy to have you along on those terms. It's called peer coaching. So how does that sound? Beautiful. I, I love the idea, actually. Uh, we used to do it only uh, in, in the safety department. I remember assigning one day and one hour uh, for the decentralized safety coordinators to gather from different divisions and share their experiences and the obstacles and how to go about them. And that was a great idea. Um, totally. I don't know what Phoebe's take on this. Yeah, Phoebe, what's your view? Yeah, th th thank you. Uh, yeah, my, my thought process comes here is, you know, uh, I, I like to come with the first uh, aspect that, you know, model the way. As, as if it is seen that, okay, my leaders are modeling the way. And the people below because you know especially in a hierarchical organization uh, the higher the hierarchy you are on a stage being watched by others and what what comes out of that if and it is where that trust process is key and if people feel that okay i if i i'm vulnerable at this point and share that i am and it and if that is taken in that way by the uh, people of positional hierarchy and the trust is built it is a fantastic way of getting things discussed and solved else uh, there will be a hesitation for people to come and say okay i want to be in this process because this is this can be a barrier this can be a barrier to move up or down so i, I i'm just keen for example uh, to hear from all of you on, you, you know, what, what we can do to build that trust process because that is that is a key element from a, uh, for people to come in and say, I, I need help. I, I need uh, support. Yeah. I, I, I need to ideate with you. Yeah. Because there are situations in which um, uh, uh, I have heard sometimes people, especially in the high, uh, authority, saying that don't come with problems, come with solutions. But sometimes solutions can only be developed in discussion with people who can say yes or no to those solutions. You know, otherwise my time and my thought process is wasted. And and if that trust is not there, this this does not work. So I just like to hear from all of you in this. What this can we do? This peer peer relationship. So we are all at the same level, right? And we're saying, I got this idea, but I don't know that's going to work. Or I had this this discussion with one of my team members. I didn't handle it all that well. What are you? What would your views be if you were in this situation? And it's it's a really. A, a, by the way, coming right back to the first point, it may be a matter of having just two people start this. Two people have really yeah. solid trust between each other, and they get together and talk regularly. Then they expand that out and have one or two others join them. But the rules of this engagement are trust is, a, is what it's all about. This is about coaching each other. This is not about directing each other on how they should do their job. This is coaching. And, and when those parameters are made clear and people know they're going to get value from it, you know, it's a little bit like, like I've always said, um, 
the leaders leave their ego at the door. But if they bring their ego into this situation, then it's going to be sabotaged. But if leaders leave their ego at the door and genuinely have a discussion of trying to coach and help others at this at the same level, they're not competing with that person. They're not so trying to say, well, I'm going to give him some wrong advice so that his career falls in a big heap. No, not at all. Not at all. That's not trust. That's not helping. So peer coaching is a really powerful way if it's if it's you know, handled the right way, and I see no reason when it's when the right discussion takes place for it not to be implemented at various levels in the organisation, so that people learn from each other and coach each other. Mohammed, uh, I had a question now, uh, which is when it goes to personal level. I mean, in one on one, which it will, especially when we do this activity, which I love the activity of getting together, uh, being vulnerable and trustworthy enough to share uh, our needs, our queries, our confusion. And then I am guessing, in fact, I'm certain that at one level, one of the leaders will ask for a personal help because the atmosphere is very encouraging to go a step further and ask one of the team members, hey, Phoebe, can I talk to you, uh, you know, personally? separately then he will open up on a deeper issue now my question is when leaders choose to go on one on one and they feel that they have to do uh, occasionally with their team members isn't that going to take more effort and more skills that are not uh, the same as those when we sit around the round table you know it's it's a lot different when we go one on one so there will be some discomfort. There will be something to get over. Otherwise, you won't get results. So my question to you, Graham and Phoebe, what do I need? What do I need to consider? What do I need to learn? What do I need to uh, observe when I go one-on-one? -on -one? Because otherwise, if I'm afraid, I won't go there. You know, I'll choose to be just in the, within the group. I'll ask general questions and not show what I am suffering from. So, so how can we make it easy for a leader to go one on one? Can I give you three simple steps? Oh, three, not only one. Great. Simple. Certainly, if you're not experienced at doing this, this is what I say. The first one is empathy. Right? Mm -hmm. as say as we say in Arabic, ta'atuf. Ta'atuf. <laughs> <laughs> So what happens when you dem someone says, I've got this issue, and can I share it with you? And the first part of it is that the person shows empathy. And then what do they do? They say, how do you think I can help you? And then they listen. Three steps. Empathy, how do you think I can help you? And then they listen. Tell me about it. Mind you, the very fact that they telling, of course, is an opportunity for the person who's doing the telling to, to, to become more clear on what the problem is when they're telling it, right? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. When someone is demonstrating empathy towards them and is listening and is not immediately coming up with, with a solution. Now, I know, and we're getting slightly off the track here, but I want to focus on the coaching element. Coaching is important. We know that in certain cultures that when someone asks for help that, uh, or wants to talk about a problem, that the other person they're talking to believes that they that person wants the solution to the problem when, in fact, all mm -hmm. they might want to do is just talk about it. Am I, are, you, are you understanding who I'm, who I'm talking about, Mohammed? Um, that, that in, in I'll, I'll, actually, I'll be specific because every time I say this, people of the Arab culture say, oh, yes, this person wants to solve my problem. And don't, not always is the problem needed to be solved. They just mm. walk. Mm. They want some empathy demonstrated. They want someone to listen to them. And then we, you can move forward from, from that. And, you know, it's, it's a matter Beautiful. of... Beautiful. The, then what, how, how can I help you? And then the listening process. And through that, Really simply, you get to an opportunity of either you, that you need to help them in another way, or what my what my suggestion might be. It is still coaching. Without, yeah, noted. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. 
Gentlemen. Yeah, just just to just to just to add <laughs> again, just a bit more depth to what you mentioned. Um, you know, when it is listening, you know, uh, again, sometimes you know, uh, it is about that. You know, being being present, and right. it sounds simple, but you know how 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 much presence we are and attention we are giving into uh, that that person who is sitting with us. Uh, 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 this is uh, this is something which I just noticed in one uh, situation in a workplace. You know, uh, uh, the conversation is between the department head and the manager, and uh, the manager is looking into the laptop, and the uh, and that you have to be fully present with that person. So that is something which I just want to Absolutely. highlight. And uh, sounds simple, but uh, you know you have to keep away that distractions and fully focus on that person in that conversation. So uh, really, uh, again, really good point to wrap this up on. You know, we know the old cliche, my door is always open. That's such a cliche because invariably when you go to that person, they're so busy anyway that they can't give you their attention, but they've said my door is always open. So Phoebe's point is well made that when someone is in a coaching situation with you as a leader, you give them your full attention. This is critical. You listen and you give them your full attention. You devote that time to them. You're not worrying about what else is coming in on your WhatsApp or, or your pings or whatever. Concentrate, focus, concentrate. Coaching that person is critical, one-on-one -on -one or with the group. We could go on. I'm sure we've opened up a whole raft of different things in regard to developing the, our people through coaching and through leadership. Gentlemen, let me thank you for your rich contributions, and I hope that people who are with us today have picked up some ways that they can help others by coaching them as leaders. Any final comments, gentlemen, as we wrap this up? Yes, yeah, um, something which... Yeah, go ahead, Mohamed. After yeah, I'm glad that um, we have opened the subject uh, that leadership uh, can can go uh, leader in, on a personal level that looks like a personal level, but, but actually it's very profound uh, and helps the betterment of the person and the organization. Coaching others, Absolutely. amazing. Over yes. to you. Maybe one final word. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, coaching is a conversation and uh, it is not just for the fish for today, but fish for our food for life. Absolutely. This is what happens when you develop people through coaching and whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a gift for life. That's a, what a great way to end. Thank you so much, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you again uh, next week. Have a great week. See you.